Welcome to Glenda Blasts Your Ear Off, flash fiction stories written by Josh Bush and narrated by Glenda Villamar. Enjoy! You have 1,440 minutes in a day. Use five of those minutes and visit freerice.com to play trivia games and help end world hunger. Freerice.com Episode 10, That Little Purple Cloud At first, Beth thought she was seeing things. She had been sitting on her balcony, and suddenly there was a purple cloud floating in the air next to her. Then the cloud spoke into her mind. I need help. Will you help me? Beth had been taught that when life throws you a ball of weird, you should catch it. And so Beth replied, Yes, of course. How can I help you? The cloud said, I am not from your planet. I need help getting back to my planet. Beth blinked, and then she blinked again. And you think I'm capable of helping you with that? All I need is a way to see the stars. Well, in a couple of hours you can see them when it gets dark here. If you need somewhere to wait until then, you can wait here at my apartment. The alien said, I'd like that. Thank you. And Beth opened her balcony door, and the two of them entered her apartment. Seeing the stars will help you get home? The alien said, Yes. It will help me contact my people. My ship malfunctioned on the way down to the surface of your planet. If I can't contact my people, then I'm unable to return home. Beth patted the air next to the purple alien, on top of where his shoulder would be if he had one, and said, There, there. You'll get to talk to your people. All we have to do is wait a couple of hours. Everything is going to work out, just you see. The alien said, Thank you. I appreciate your help. He paused and said, You have many dirty food containers in that part of your apartment. Yes, in my kitchen. I have dishes I need to wash. The alien drifted over to the kitchen, and Beth followed. The alien said, Wash your dishes. I'll watch. Beth looked at all the dishes. There were dishes from a day and a half of meals. Beth said, Sure, good idea. I doubt I'll be able to wash all of them, but I'll try. The alien asked, What is your occupation? Beth answered, I don't have an occupation. I am disabled. I have a disease. My body won't work when I want it to. The alien prodded, If you don't have an occupation, then how do you pass your days? I gamble. And I do chores. Beth paused. And by gambling, I mean the socially acceptable kind of gambling. Playing the stock market. Is it important to you to be accepted by society? Beth was having a wonderful time talking to the alien. She answered, I suppose it does. A great deal. We all want to feel like we belong. Beth stopped washing dishes and leaned heavily against the sink. The alien asked, Is something wrong? I'm sorry. It's my disease. I'm more fatigued than I thought. Meeting you has made me forget to be aware of my energy levels. I have to go lay down. If I don't go lay down, I'll lose consciousness. The alien said, But you haven't finished washing your dishes. My body doesn't care, unfortunately. The dishes will have to wait. To Beth's surprise, the alien said, If I enter your body, I could help you wash the dishes. Would you like to try that? In a quieter voice, Beth said simply, We can try. The alien went into Beth, and she didn't feel the alien inside of her at all. What Beth did feel was the overwhelming fatigue pulling her down, but this was just her disease, not the influence of the alien. Beth thought it was kind of the alien to want to help her, but it was impossible to turn off the disease. Soon, she would be chained to her bed, where she'd be like a statue who could barely move. But something different happened today. Beth's fatigue lifted and faded away completely. Any other day, if she ignored her body's command to lay down, she'd have slumped to the floor, or worse, passed out, possibly hurting herself. The alien somehow turned off her disease. The alien asked, Has the urge to lay down subsided? If so, may I do dishes with you now? Yes, let's do dishes. Beth spoke with wonder in her voice. And thank you for helping me. Beth thought the alien sounded excited when he asked her, May I use your body to wash the dishes? 
Could you simply be here and allow me to do everything? Yes, go ahead. Beth marveled at the alien being able to move her body. He really could move her body parts. It felt like when her father had taught her how to do dishes. Her father had been behind her, and he had held her arms and her hands, guiding her movements. The alien said, I love this. Playing with water and these dishes? I wish there were more dishes to do. I could do this forever. When the dishes were done, the alien left Beth's body, and instantly the fatigue was back. The alien followed Beth, who walked to her bedroom, where she promptly plopped onto her bed. The alien said, Is it normal among your people to sleep with your coverings in such disarray, and to sleep with coverings that smell like body odor? Beth looked at the purple cloud and said, I'm sure most healthy people do not, but with my disease, there's only so much I can do. May I enter your body again, and we could fix your coverings? Beth sat up. Yes, please. I'd like that very much. And the alien entered her body. And once again, Beth's fatigue vanished. Beth began to remove the blankets from her bed, and she stopped. You are letting me do everything. Do you want to do this? Would it make you happy like when you did the dishes? The alien said, I would like very much to fix the coverings. And he took the blankets and dirty sheets off the bed. Then, with Beth's instructions, he got clean sheets from the linen closet and put them and the blankets onto her bed. There was still time before nighttime, and still time for the alien to take a ride in Beth's body. Beth felt like she had won the lottery, as the alien then did a load of laundry, cleaned her bathroom, and he even scrubbed the soap scum from her bathtub. Beth sat on her bed and said, I should sleep now. I'll only need to sleep for about an hour, and then it will be dark. The alien whispered, Can I stay inside of your body while you sleep? You won't notice me. Go right ahead. But wait, when you're inside of me, I don't feel my disease, and I won't be able to sleep. After a few moments, the alien paused and said, Do you feel your disease now? Yes, there's the fatigue, said Beth, and she slept. Upon waking, Beth saw that it was finally dark, and she said, Good, the fatigue is all gone. It's dark. It's time to look at the stars and get you to your people. The alien exited Beth's body, and they walked to the balcony. Beth opened the door, and the alien sped through the doorway. The alien sighed and lamented, My stars aren't there. Where are the stars? I can barely see any at all. There must be something wrong with your world. Beth stepped out onto the balcony and said, It's not my world. It's where I live. The city lights are blocking out the stars. I forgot. I'm sorry. The alien said, I must go where I can see the most stars. Where is that? Would you take me there? Beth sat down and answered, The place with the most stars I've ever seen was in Canyonlands National Park. I hiked there 15 years ago. It was the best hike of my life. I dream of returning there often, but my disease has prevented me from going back. So yes, I'd love to take you there. The alien asked, Can we leave now? Beth whooped, Yes! The alien sat in the passenger seat, next to Beth in the driver's seat, and he asked, Are you experiencing any fatigue driving? Beth beamed, With my disease? Driving doesn't give me a lot of fatigue, and when it does, I can pull over and take a quick nap. I see. So on your return trip without me, your disease won't prevent you from returning home. Beth hadn't realized the alien wouldn't require additional help from her after he had talked with his people. She was going to miss having him around. Enter my body. I want to show you something, teased Beth, and the alien went into Beth's body. Beth rolled down the window and stuck out her arm. The alien cooed, This feels incredible. And Beth played with the air rushing by. They did this for five minutes, and then Beth had an even better idea. Beth stuck her head out the window like a dog. The intensity of the air flowing over your face is exhilarating, laughed the alien. But a minute later, not wanting to get into an accident, Beth pulled her head back inside. Hours passed and Beth was racked in pain from her disease. 
Beth felt the unrelenting grip of pain in her neck, all over her head, her shoulders, her back, her knees, her wrists, and in her hands. It was like twenty small dogs were gnawing on her bones. The alien asked, Is your disease doing something to you? Beth coughed. My disease is giving me lots of pain. The alien suggested, I could enter your body and try to take the pain away. Beth said softly, I'd like that. And the alien entered Beth's body. Almost immediately, the pain went away, and Beth slumped into the driver's seat with utter relief. Beth whispered, Thank you, thank you, thank you. More hours passed, and Beth was hungry. Typically, Beth avoided the foods that made the symptoms of her disease worse, sugar, dairy, gluten, and caffeine. But spending time with the alien was a vacation from her disease. So when Beth stopped at a gas station, she picked up a sandwich that had thick slices of bread and extra cheese, a gigantic coffee with six sugars and six shots of cream, and a tub of ice cream. Beth asked the alien, Want to taste this wonderful food? Very much so, said the alien, and he rushed into Beth. He made noises of rapturous delight that mirrored exactly how Beth felt. It was a little after sunset, and Beth was exhausted from a full day of driving, so she stopped and got a hotel room. The alien said, I want to look at the stars. Beth yawned, did a great big stretch on the bed, and said, Tomorrow we'll arrive at the Canyonlands. We won't be in the car as long as we were today. The alien spoke again. You said city lights block out the stars. We aren't in a city now, so I want to look at the stars outside this hotel. Beth closed her eyes. She had assumed they would hike into Canyonlands, camp the night, and then see the stars. But what if they didn't even need to go to Canyonlands? Beth wouldn't get to hike in that magical part of the country after all. Beth sat up and said, Yes, let's go look at those stars. The sooner you get back to your people, the better. They went outside, and the alien looked at the stars. Ten minutes passed, and Beth just knew the alien was getting what he needed from the stars. Beth had a feeling their time together had come to an end. The alien interrupted her thoughts and said, I talk to my people. I'll be leaving now to rendezvous with them. But before I go, I want to be sure you're able to return to your home. Beth beamed. You talked with them? I'm so happy for you. And don't worry about me. I'll get home just fine. The alien said, Thank you for helping me. It was very kind of you. Beth nodded her head and said, My pleasure. And then the alien slowly started to rise into the sky. The moonlight let Beth see the alien rise higher and higher until Beth couldn't see him anymore. Beth waved and said, Goodbye. Beth walked back to her hotel. She was in a daze. Beth was sad that their time together was over so soon. Beth came to a decision. Tomorrow, she would finish the journey and go to Canyonlands alone. Beth knew her disease would make a long hike impossible, but a tiny hike would still be incredible. And Beth also knew she never would have gone on this trip if it wasn't for that little purple cloud. The End Thank you for listening to today's episode. We look forward to bringing you the next episode in Glenda Blasts Your Ear Off. And now for a teaser from a podcast I enjoy listening to called Buttered Feet. What are ancient grains anyway? He quibble farted, pausing too long over the image of Claudia and Tess on the front page. James did the air fingers around ancient grains. I regurgitated a hot Javanese Alpro mix and then swallowed it back. Spelt, etc. I nodded absent-mindedly watching bacon fat spray the hob. That'll be a bugger to clean. I left him hunched over his gristle and went to the extension above the garage to Peloton. To Peloton isn't a real verb yet, but I'm owning this.